been trying to get away out of this house for the last two to three years. I said, well, how do we go and freeze the bloody death in here or what? Nearly ready, Pet. They just let the houses go to rack and ruin, and they boarded some of them up. On Monday, we were still in here, more or less, still freezing. Nothing was had been said or anything. On Tuesday, nothing happened again. But they must have seen in the Burn Express what you people were showing. Wednesday, I went out, did my shopping, come back, and we had an house on Wednesday. I said, and today, I'm moving into the new house. So uh, I think you people have done a hell of a lot about it. Uh, they must get panicking or something. The Bleak House and Plaintree Estate was completed by the Burnley Council in 1938. Situated in a prime position, it is close enough to Burnley's town and industrial areas, yet is next to schools, the countryside and the Pennine Moors. Until a few years ago, the estate remained a flourishing community and the relationship between the tenants, the Labour Council and housing authority was excellent. Now everything has changed. It has become a ghetto. Houses and amenities have fallen into disrepair. Even though Burnley has a long housing waiting list, houses are empty and all boarded up. Tenants live in fear. Many have already left, but a few still remain. My name is Jean Towles. This is my husband, Mick. Yeah. We've lived in this house for two years, and we've lived on the estate for 18. Our house is uh, ruined with damp, and it's, uh, it's through us not putting enough eating in ourselves, and uh, through condensation. Well, the council say this is all got in condensation, but uh, myself, I think it's black damp. They say to you keep your windows open where you're cooking and washing and have you, which we do do, even in winter time. My wife keeps the back door open when she's doing all the washing, and she has plenty of washing to do, like. She does washing three or four times a week. It's only last August since her uh, wallpaper in here. It's just all out this upstairs. It's even coming to the living room now, and it's uh, heated in there all, all during the day. So, all the week when it were really cold, we are all just sat here, huddled up with uh, blankets, yeah, well, yeah. and no crying when it were bedtime. But I felt cruel having to put them to bed. Well, keep still, Vicky. Well, we've to have on from between 6 and 7 at morning, right up to 12 at night, when we go to bed. It's uh, nearly £21 a week, and I don't think it's worth it to live in conditions like we are. This is how I have to put my baby to bed every night. More or less fully clothed, and we are bonnet on, because it's too cold. And they waiting up during the night. And then I have four children, we're also wet bed, as a problem, and they get up freezing cold during the night. And, uh, you just don't know what to do with them for, to keep them warm. Like I said, you have to put them to bed fully dressed. I've had my doctors up, my old visitor. My doctor said it was like Siberia. And my old visitor said uh, men in prison are better off than what we are. Our beds are damp, we've been against wall. And there's nowhere else where I can put baby Scott. I took away drafts, all the damp. There's nowhere at all where I can put it. I just could cry having to bring them up here in winter. It's just like a dungeon. That's how I describe it. It's like a dungeon. There's never been any hold back on repairs on this estate. All the orders are put through as and when required. Now, I don't control the workforce and I can't answer for that. I won't answer it. But we certainly do our best to get repairs done. It's in our interest as management to get them done. And I've asked them to come and do repairs. They said it's on the list. You have to wait. We were ordering it's six or seven months. And that, you know, and I've got a job from 1983 and it still hasn't been done yet. And they said they did the slate and they thought, well, just coming through the wall. And they, they've done the job and as far as they're concerned, the job's done. And they won't do no more. 
a man came round, a plumber, and he said, oh, uh, I'll just have a look at your gutter. So I said, right. So he had a look at it, he said, right. He said, I'll come back after dinner. He said, I'm just going to the ladders. It took him 18 months to come back and put me new gutter on. People have been left waiting far too long for simple repairs, but people in this area haven't been taken seriously. There's been a reluctance on the part of, of, of certain members of the direct works department to do repairs in this area. There was one instance where a lady who had a young baby was blamed because the breathing of the baby was supposed to be causing condensation, which led to very bad damp and mould in her house. The baby? The baby, yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely unbelievable. What an excuse for having a, a mouldy wall, you know, your baby's breathing. I believe that they don't, simply don't care how people are. They're not living, they're just existing. And how they existed under these conditions, it's a miracle. I think they have a, a damn sheet to accept blends for a property that's in such a terrible state. Never do any repairs? No, no. You can't keep telling them about that. Several times, and you say, oh, we'll send somebody up, but they never do that, all this. I said, there's nothing we can do about the windows, because if we put new ones in, they'll only be broken again. I complained about the gas meter. I said, we can't provide a new meter, you'll have to provide your own. You have to do cooking on the fire, because we simply have no gas. Many places will uh, stay dry with bright periods. Western air has become... Of course it's damp. You want to see his bedroom. It's soaking wet. And I'm worried about the water dripping onto the electric wires. Do you like living like this? No, we don't. Good Lord, it, it just makes... What a silly question to ask. Do you like living like this? Uh -huh. Might as well be. Um, it's all right people going around and talking about what they're suffering, but if they don't go to the right place and tell the right people, we can't do anything. As regards this window, you know and I know it's the tenant's responsibility. Now, if tenants don't have the resources to do that and put windows back in, obviously one feels very sorry. They're currently half a million pounds underspent on housing repairs. And every year since I can remember, the council has been underspent on its housing repairs fund. It's absolutely ridiculous. They just don't spend at all. And they just blame it on the government. It's not the government's fault. Housing repairs comes out of revenue. It doesn't come out of capital. There's not been half a million underspent. You know, this is, uh, again, a misunderstanding of the situation. The amount that the housing committee provided was not spent up. But it's not been underspent. It's there. The work is still to be done. The work has been ordered and the work will be done. For the last four years, I've been living in this flat, right? And now, I've got no bath. And I've had no bath now for the past seven months or eight months, near enough. And now, it's three weeks now since I've had any water. And I have to go and carry water from house to house. This is where the bathroom and toilet used to be like. It were all rotten and soft, the tiles and that was picking up. So the corporation just come up and had a look at it and they said, well, You'll have to close it off. Well, that's a bit uh, out of the question, like, you know. I haven't been in this tour uh, maybe twice a week, because they only come maybe once a fortnight, or maybe once a week, and maybe sometimes they don't come for three weeks. So I have to empty it out then pretty often myself. The sewers are all blocked the whole way right down along. The corporation, they're just not bothering. Do you think we're just scrum up here, just like rats live from day to day and things like that? This is what the council thinks. Nobody knows only us what live in it. The council don't bother. They could send wagons up to clear it all away. When the children are playing out, you have to watch them all the time. In the past, you could put all the toys out and leave them for day. We've even had parties in us back garden. Once of a day, if a, a tenant came out of uh, any property at all, the wagon came up and made sure that there was nothing left. But they don't bother now. They just don't care. It's, it's degraded and it smells and all terrible, especially when you're not weather. If you look round these houses and look closely at them, look at those window frames. Those have all been replaced and they're not too distant past. This estate was painted a couple of years ago. All the one bedroom accommodation have been improved up to modern standards. The houses have been rewired. We've had uh, sitting out areas constructed. If you look at the damage and the vandalism, that's not the council. Well, there's a sewage park under my bedroom and there's rats coming through it. 
and they said it's not their job, it's the water board, and the water board said it's not their job, it's the council. So which do you turn to? Who else can I turn to? Nobody, they won't do no. The only time they bother to do any cleaning at all is when somebody actually goes up to visit the estate. When Ian Gal visited last year, they were up there in droves cleaning the official route. They didn't clean the unofficial route, but they cleaned the official route where they thought he'd actually be going. This here is all crawling. There's been rats found dead inside here and everything, right? And over here, this is another ice. And that, go with her. Right, I'll show you. And it's fucking there now. This house particularly is had a gas explosion with a danger to kids. And they weren't bothered. They didn't come and ask us to move or anything. You know, the roof's blown in and everything with the gas pipe. The gas was still on. The electric is still on, and yet they still haven't come up to turn anything off at all. And it's, it's full of rats and rubbish, and it's just it's disgusting. Well, we're trying to clear them, but again, you get people who break in, as you've said, use them for all sorts of purposes and try to live in them, and it's ruining. So you're saying that people are breaking into these houses, putting all their rubbish into it, and then boarding them back up again? No, I'm saying that we have to board them back up and try to keep them clear and, as you say, stop them becoming a house. But you, you go into almost any of these houses and they're full of rubbish, even the boarded up ones. Yeah. I mean, which must be a health hazard, which you must be responsible for. Well, if it's full of rubbish, it's because it's been taken back in after we've cleared it. Well, I would like to go in there and find any in there for you. But there is quite a lot of actually well, We did ask for Ryan Murphy to come from Shelter, which he did last year, and he came again, you know, to see us, and he said, well, it's about time the council got took to court. Well, it's very clear, with, with all this muck <coughs> and grime around, that it's uh, a health hazard. And, I mean, if you look at that one there, I mean, that's yeah. got to be a health hazard, and that's unlawful. All those are disease carriers. Yeah. And ultimately, the council are responsible, and it's their duty in law yeah. to actually do something about it and get it moved. I've seen many things in the 15 years I've worked for this organisation, but this one certainly takes some beating. The estate's in an appalling condition. I mean, I've seen flats and maisonettes in this condition, but mm. these are nice houses, well built, built in the 1930s when we built the best council houses. And it's staggering that any council uh, can actually allow people to live in conditions that are beyond belief. I mean, we've criticised Rackman and quite properly over the years, but it would seem to me that in this city, the Rackman of the world is, uh, is the council. I've walked around the estate and I would say that every single property I've seen, if uh, the tenant were to take the, the council to court, they'd be successful without any doubt at all. I'd stake my reputation on that. I don't think that many members of the council, or if any, could be de described as sort of malicious or intentionally trying to run down any particular estate. Though it does disturb me that some people within the housing department seem quite happy to create a ghetto type situation. Is there much illness on the estate? Yes, yeah, too much. Well, I mean, that clearly leads me to believe that not only could you do what I was saying before, take action under the Housing Act, but you could actually take an action under the Public Health Act 1936, Section mm. 99, mm. Um, for the council allowing you to live in a situation which is injurious to health. Mm. And that, in fact, is a criminal prosecution mm. in the Magistrates Court. When you see the solicitor, remember, suggest to him the possibility of an action under the Public Health Act 1936. Mm. That's a powerful piece of legislation. Mm. It means a criminal prosecution in a magistrate's court. It means your landlord is a criminal. On the hill far away, to the door. You never see the council. What are you on about? You never see the council. This housing uh, authority, whatever it is, council, you know, the, the housing um, officials, they're like, uh, they're like bloody poster guys. You know they're there, but you never see them. I mean, I wouldn't know a council official if I fell over him. But the council wasting money, like I just said previous, about right, coming to do the part the garden steps and the handrails, and we don't have one. That's a waste of money. I don't think they can run a raffle, never mind a council. It's gone worse and worse. When you get up in the morning, you see that a lot. You, you, it makes you, you feel like you're in back in bed again. When you, when you look out the bedroom and you so there's a lot, you know. They've let all these eight houses go. There's a waiting list a mile long. Why didn't they put tenants in? Instead of losing all this money. 
But it's terrible when you get a bit of hot weather, a bit of sunshine like last year. And uh, the privets are all overgrown way out with chairs and cutting them. Why well, can't the council come up and cut them and, and try and make there's enough uh, men and young men doing community work? Surely to God they can send somebody up here and uh, tidy it up. We do our best. The housing policy is a shambles. Uh, just recently in the council they admitted they never had a policy. They certainly have, haven't got one at the moment. And when we pressed them in the council for a future policy, uh, the, the chairman of housing said he didn't have a glass ball, and that was his answer. The Labour Party in Burnley have been in control for many, many years, and I believe have come very complacent. They have spent £150,000 on renovating the front of the town hall, and if I was the town clerk, and they spent this £50,000 on the lift, and now they are planning to spend £2.25 million on renovating the building next to the town hall, uh, which will become an arts centre, and as some have said, will be the venue for the new Bears Ball. During the past year, it was noted that the council wanted to get Bleak House off their hands. The tenants did not know what was happening, whether they were being evicted or not. There was a lot of rumours. 112 houses was to be sold for £1,500 each. The top half of the estate was being given to Wimpies in return for adjacent houses being remodernised. But most of the discussions went on behind closed doors. I don't think it's fair what they're doing. I mean, why not come up, uh, come out in the open and let us know and put us, us mind at ease? And that'll be a big thing. It'll be a tonic to all of us. Because, like I said in the past, Paul, the people didn't want to go and they still don't want to go. The, the thing is, it's a shambles. They started off with the idea, I believe, 12 months ago. They've done nothing about it, only put it off and put it off. I think the major problem is a major split in the Labour Party in Burnley where they Labour councillors aren't in agreement with the Labour Party and between them they've made a complete botch of it. Burnley isn't isolated, this is, uh, if you like, a microcosm of what's happening throughout this country. You could go to any council estate, any private estate, I think, and you'll see this sort of thing. There's a lack of investment in public housing and private housing, and this is the situation that we're in. These houses... So what are you doing? What we're doing about them is trying to ease our own particular problems in the only way we can the only way that the finances are sort of available. That's through the private sector. They decided in May that something was to be done about the estate. Does that also mean it wasn't discussed by the council? It wasn't discussed by the council at all, no. Just by senior officers and members of the council, i.e. Uh, committee chairman, this kind of thing. The council, after a great deal of heart searching, has decided the only way to go is to sell some of the houses up here to a private firm and the 112 houses of those that surround us at the moment. Unfortunately, this will mean that uh, a number of tenants who are still remaining here will need to move. We don't want to move. We like it here. And we've been here 45 years. And I don't see why Wimpy should have them for 1,500 after we've... I've brewed up. So... And we like the view and the outlook. And Milton's done a, spent a lot on it and done a lot of work on this house. I mean, as roots are up here and uh, we've done a lot for the community centre to stop vandalism in the past. I mean, we haven't sat back and let uh, let it go on. They are giving away, and I and I use that term, uh, giving away 112 properties uh, on Bleak House Estate to Wimpies in return for. Wimpy's doing up properties on another estate. They've just um, finalised or they've decided to, that Wimpy's will be doing up 50 houses at a cost of three quarters of a million pounds. The slate lids on these houses will cost as much as what the house itself had cost to build. Because you won't get slates now. But on the real thing is Wimpy's up here. £1,500 house. And what they're going to offer us for this? We have to leave this be uprooted, and what they're going to offer us. They won't offer me or apple and orange in the bloody lucky bag. Why wasn't it put out to public tender? In a way, it was. We brought in three of the most experienced firms in the country, and we invited them to submit schemes. They did, and as I say, the one that we consider to be the most appropriate is the one that was accepted finally. Oldham had a similar problem with an estate and it put it out to public tender in full consultation with the tenants and it got over 80 offers. 
they got far better deal for their tenants. No tenant who did not want to leave the estate had to leave that estate. Final decisions haven't been taken yet, but as you know from our discussion, Wimpers are going to carry out improvements in kind rather than cash payments. Because once again, if you go into this question of receiving cash for these houses, we'll be penalised. We'd only be able to spend a fifth of what we get on our own property. So therefore, quite rightly in my opinion, we've done a deal with the contractors who are going to improve some of the other houses that we're not selling to them. We want to try to encourage and stimulate that investment and make this area the decent sort of area it could be. And so again, we're depriving other areas to help to support this one. But it's the best deal that we could get. The best deal for everybody. Many of the remaining tenants don't think that it is a good deal for them. They asked to see Jesse Bradshaw, the chairman of the Housing Committee. So in that programme, we've got £730,000 to do improvements to other properties. Well, why couldn't you build them up and, instead of trying to move us out? Well, well, I'll tell you something. We're <laughs> not moving. We're buying ours. And you can't, you can't stop us either. Well, yeah, if you I put... Told, I told you this on the phone. We are buying. You did, we, Mr. Gregory. Yes, and we've applied to buy. And I don't see any reason why we can't buy ours. And what we don't want a mortgage. We're paying cash for ours, so you don't need to say you'll refuse us a mortgage. Well, we can't refuse a mortgage. No, you and you can't, and you can't, and you can't refuse it to buy it. We can't so refuse it. So we are buying. No, well, we're buying. Yeah, we can't refuse it the right to buy it. No, well, well I mean, right, I think that's... I, what I said to Mr. All Gregory... That's I want to know. What I said to Mr. Gregory, when I'm like, oh, yeah, that's fair comment. Why uh, should we move... For your convenience, when you haven't spent anything on houses, we've spent a load of money on our yeah, house, true, yeah. and we've built Ten a years. drive where they've offered us. There's nowhere to put a drive, there's nowhere to have a garage, and if you think we're having a car outside that we've paid thousands of pounds for, you've got another thing coming. Ten years I'll, ago, when we saw the estate uh, deteriorate, uh, we put in is. for a move, and in that ten years, we've just had one, which was previously... Uh, Clivager, and, and, and it was a and it was two big. And and since up. then, we haven't been acknowledged or anything. No, well, I, I, I and I wrote, that's ten years ago. I wrote to Mr Norris for an, uh, an, an appointment, and I got an appointment, but who did I see? I just saw the woman that was over the housing visitors, and do you know what she told me? In nowhere will you get a transfer from, uh, from up there unless somebody exchanges you. That's where I got told. And, and they came to view me, I said, and I don't know why you want to move for. She said, you've got a lovely home. I said, I know I have. Mm. I said, but we've spent money on it. So why should we, at our time of life, have to give that home up that we've spent all this money on just to suit you and, and your incompetence? Yeah. Because I'll tell you this much, you can't run a damn raffle, well, never mind a council, if that's how you're sorting it out. Well, whether it has the right to buy or not is a thing that will have to be determined. Because at the moment, of course, the council are already taking action to complete this contract and arrangement with Wimpers. The law says you have a right to buy. You've had a right to buy since 1980. That right only exists because the council is your landlord. The council mm -hmm. is still your landlord. You've still got the right to buy. I have a note here from Mr Ian Gow, which tells me there that, that I have the right to buy. Well, the minister's obviously got it right. So uh, uh, if he's saying that, he's not telling lies, is he? He's certainly not. And no. I must admit, he's a very powerful ally so, for you to have. Right. Yeah. Now, what I do, you've got that letter from the minister. Yeah. I'd send a letter to the minister, Mr. Gow, explain that you've now filled the form in, mm -hmm. uh, explain equally that you've got a feeling that they don't want you to buy. Send that letter to the minister and send a copy of that letter to the chief executive here. Mr. Whittle. So they know that Mr. Gow is still your ally. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'd also send them a copy of that letter so that they're very firmly convinced and got it right in their heads that uh, you want to buy and that no lesser person than the minister said that you can buy. I have the right to stay here as long as I want. Even if Wimpy's do them up. I still have the right to come back in it, if I didn't buy it. Every time we ask the council anything, you can't get to know anything. Over the last two or three years while this has been going on. They've misled the people over the last couple of years, and they have now issued this document requiring them to give up possession of their homes. It says that the, the act on which they're doing it is the 1980 Housing Act, and it says that the landlord intends within a reasonable time to either demolish or reconstruct the building or to carry out work on the building. Now, the landlord has no intention whatsoever of doing any work on the building. He intends, i.e. the council intends to sell it. And the people that have received these documents are really worried because they think that this means they have to leave their homes, and they don't.
just not true. This is symptomatic of, of, of the way in which many members of the housing department view tenants, that, that they feel that they don't have the right to, to have information, they don't have the right to make decisions, and that the, the council can send out whatever kind of, of documents they want, however inaccurate and how unintelligible they are. It would appear that there's been a deliberate policy on the part of the council to run these down to such an extent that you now think the only thing you can do is sell them for £1,500. <coughs> I mean, <coughs> seems to me that there's been incredibly bad management of the estate. No, I think there's some blame that one, one could be placed on ourselves and after in foresight this could always be a case. Uh, it's, it's not been a deliberate, deliberate policy because they are assets. What about the repairs? I mean, clearly they have not been done. I mean, time after time today I've heard tenants say to me, I've asked for the repairs to be carried out. Uh, window frames, doors, dampness throughout, and nothing has happened. And they're now in an appalling situation, an appalling condition. I, I mean, think, th th as far as I'm concerned, the repairs that's been needed to the property has, has been carried out. We do, in fact, are equal, uh, I think it's £287 per dwelling, which is equal to the national average. In fact, it's over national average. Uh, and repairs that needed to be carried out have been carried out. In but fact, with respect, I mean, you, you can say that, and other chairmen of housing have said similar things to me. And then you walk into the dwelling, and what do you see? You see the council-owned slum. And there can be no argument that those properties outside this hall are slums. And they are neglected, and they're in a state of disrepair. That is unbelievable. Now, there has to be an explanation for that. And it can only, in my view, be put down to bad management on the part of the council. I mean, there has to be an explanation. It didn't happen by accident, council. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, they are of the most substantial kind of council house. They were built yes. pre-war yes, and good are. brick. Good brick, yeah. That's why you've been able to sell them to, to, uh, to Wimpies, of course. But They'll jump at that. It hasn't been an easy decision to sell, because our policy would not be able to sell these properties. There's no two ways about that. I don't accept the all the blame. Uh, I've said earlier in the discussions that I've had with the tenants that uh, I can improve houses, but I can't improve people. And I think that an estate is made by people who will not keep the responsibility and the social aspect to their neighbours. But it's it is me when I keep hearing this, the, the blame is always put on the poor old council tenant, when in fact the blame more properly resides in the council. You're not well, the first chairman and you won't be the last one no. to say to me, you know as well as I do that about well, tenants, so yes. I accept that. But ultimately, the disrepair in those houses is not something which is due to the tenants. The tenants pay the rent. Mm. Out of that rent, you should, pay, you should carry out the repairs. Clearly, you haven't carried out the repairs. Well, that's a matter of opinion, obviously, and... But it's I, not my opinion, it's the opinion I, of the I tenants suppose are that you'll go to other authorities and say the same in defence, and I think there is some defence to be added. But then, having said that, the tenants and ourselves are left to deal with this problem. I think you're treating us really shabbily. Up here, this last few years. Don't you? Yeah. Mm. It absolutely stinks, does this council? I think so, anyway, don't you? Yes, I do. Six years ago, there was one councillor told them it's down to spend some money on this estate. And if they had have done then, the estate would have been in a reasonable condition, which it is not now. And since then, it's gone down and down.